In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can draw a data flow diagram. So what is a data flow diagram? A data flow diagram is actually a process modeling tool that depicts the flow of data through a system. It depicts all the inputs, the processing, and the output, and the storage of data. There are some simple tools that we use to actually show the flow of data through a data flow diagram. The first is an arrow that shows the flow of data. The second is what's known as a processing circle. And the third one is an open-ended rectangle, which is actually a data store. We'll only be using data stores that are held within the information system and not using external data stores. This is the data flow diagram that we're going to create. What is that data flow diagram for? Well, it's actually a simple outcome that produces a list of all items a particular member has borrowed, showing their name, item details, and quantity. To create this data flow diagram, you need to understand your table relationship diagram. So we're going to be getting information from the customer's table the very first one on the left. We're going to be using something from the invoice table, the transaction table, and across the top, the equipment table. We're going to produce a very simple report that shows basically the member's ID, the customer's name, item ID, item name, and the quantity. To start the flow diagram, we actually need to start with the user. This is a square box. And on the flow line, we actually put all the input. So in this case, the very first thing we need to select is the member's ID. This is then passed on to a processing bubble. This processing circle finds the customer's name. So the user enters in the member ID. The first action that occurs is find the customer's name. To do this, the action bubble needs to pass on the member's ID to the member's table. From the member's table, it can return the first name and last name back to the action bubble. Once this is done, the information can then be passed on to the next processing bubble. In the next processing bubble, we need to find the invoices of a particular customer. Therefore, we'll pass in the member's ID into the invoice table, and from the invoice table, we'll return the invoice ID. This then is passed on to the next processing circle. The next processing circle wants to find the item hide and the quantity. So the invoice ID is passed into the transaction table, then the equipment ID and quantity are returned back to that processing circle, and the information is passed on to the next action. We need to find the item name, and therefore the equipment ID is passed on to the equipment's table, and from the equipment table comes the item's name. Once this is done, the information is passed on to the last processing bowl or action circle, and we pass all the information into the final stage, which is the member's ID, which was the user input, the first name, last name, which was returned by the very first action bowl, the invoice ID, the equipment ID in quantity, and last of all, the item name. This is then passed on to the very last repository, where this will produce the report and list all the items that were borrowed. As a check, all information passed on the very last flow line to the report must have been collected from a table or data repository or entered by the user. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful database tools and tutorials. And I wish you all the best in your database development.